Okay, hello. We're here to continue working through the standard quiz model for the 2019 AP Calculus AB Term 1 Standards Quiz. So basically the fifth question is what we're going to be attacking right here. And this one asks you to do two kind of different things, but in the same basic ballpark. It asks you to evaluate some common function types, some common expressions that um, might not necessarily run into all that often otherwise. So in particular, each time we're going to ask you to evaluate one log equation or one log expression and one inverse trig expression. So there's lots of stuff involving, the, the log ones should be pretty straightforward, but the inverse trig ones tend to be involving some range and output kind of restrictions. So there's some stuff to think about here. So to start with, we'll begin with um, 5, 1. And part A in this case asks us to evaluate the natural log of e to the 11. So of course, if you know what the natural log is, that is the same thing as log base e. So this is basically asking us what power of e gives us e to the 11th. Obviously that answer is 11. So pretty straightforward one to evaluate first. The second one up here brings us in and asks us to evaluate inverse sine, sometimes also written as arc sine of negative root three over two. And in a sense, that's just kind of another question you can answer. That's asking us what angle has sine negative root three over two. Now, if you'll recall, there are lots of angles. Um, any angle that's coterminal to either of the two between zero and two pi that have that particular sign would seemingly be a valid answer. But when dealing with the inverse trig functions, we actually treat them as pure functions. So there's only one output that comes from each of these things. So when dealing with inverse sine, <clears throat> inverse sine of x, all of the answers for inverse sine of x, all of the outputs, are going to be all in the same two quadrants. So basically inverse sine has a range between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Meaning that in this particular case, if we're looking for the angle whose sine is negative root 3 over 2, we can't go look down here in quadrant 3 because that's not a part of the range. Instead we need to look in quadrant 4. So we want the angle down in quadrant 4 whose sine is negative root 3 over 2. So in looking down here, you might be tempted to say that this is just going to be 5 pi over 3. But once again, it's very specific. We want that section to be continuous, or to be one continuous chunk from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So we're not going to think of that angle as being 5 pi over 3. We're going to think about it as the negative of pi over 3. So in this case, we're going to have our value negative pi over 3. And again, as we were talking here, to emphasize what it is, inverse sine is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And again, that's why when you put it into a calculator, if you were to evaluate this, it will spit out negative pi over 3. It won't spit out every possible angle that could be out, out there. So just kind of keep that in mind. Moving on to the second part of number 5, or the second part of the number 5 on the model. We want to first evaluate for part A. We want to evaluate log base one half of 32. So in order to do this, a good way to do this, something that was taught to me was I was ta taught to set it equal to something, so I'll call it y, and then to rewrite it in exponential form. So in this case, I would rewrite this as one half to the y equals 32. Now that we have this here, our goal would be to find a common base and to get them to both be something to a power, something to a power, because then we could basically undo and get rid of those bases. We could log base two both sides in this case, if that's what it is. So in here, what I notice is that I know 32 is 2 to the 5th power, and I know that 1 half is 2 to the negative 1 power. So if I rewrite my equation in such a way, I'll get y, 2 to the negative y power is equal to 2 to the 5th. Now you can imagine we could log base 2 both sides in this case. When we do, we get negative y equals 5, or y equals negative 5. So the value we are looking for up there, log base 2 of negative 1 half, is going to be negative 5. That should make sense, because if it was just log base 2 of 35, it would be positive 5. Since it's 1 half, we have something flipped, so we need a negative sign to unflip it. On the, well speaking of flip, on the flip side, we now want to look at the second expression here for this sample question. I'm going to move this up so we have a little more room. For part b, it asks us to evaluate arctangent, or inverse tangent, of negative root 3 over 3. 
Now, once again, you might know these ratios using this kind of rationalized notation. I'm not as big a fan. I like to see them in the clean original notation. So I have to know this is the same thing as negative one over root three. So we're looking for where tangent has, what angle of tangent has negative root three as its ratio. So once again, there is a range restriction built into tangent or arctangent or inverse tangent. So once again, we're in the same two quadrants as we were before with inverse sine. But the difference is for inverse tangent, we're gonna be between negative pi over two and pi over two. Now keep in mind, even though it is open brackets, it is soft brackets here, sorry. That means we don't include negative pi over two and pi over two. In that case, the tangent value would be positive or negative infinity. So just keep in mind it is possible that we could evaluate those things or talk about them in the limit. For our purposes though now, since we're between negative pi over two and pi over two and tangent is negative, we want to focus our illustration in quadrant four. So we are supposed to have the tangent, which is opposite over adjacent, be one and root three. We know this one has to be negative over there in quadrant four. And as far as our pieces, if we're opposite the one, that gives us a pi over six reference angle. So it's a 30 degree reference angle. And that means that our tangent, our inverse tangent of negative one over root three will be negative pi over six. If we were in degrees, it would be negative 30 degrees, but we're in radians, so we keep it in there. So just like inverse sine had a range restriction and it only spit out angles between negative pi over two and pi over two inclusive, so too does inverse tangent only spit out angles between negative pi over two and pi over two, but this time exclusive. So moving on to the third example, again, trying to get you a good variety here of all sorts of different little things that could pop up. For number three, it asks us first to evaluate log base three of one over the cube root of three. So looking in here, I'll follow the same strategy I did before. I'm gonna rewrite it in exponential form. I'll have three to the y equals one over the cube root of three. And now the three to the y is already good there. It's a good sign, we want a base three. Cube root of three, is the same thing as three to the one third power. So this is the same thing as one over three to the one third. But once again, because it's in the denominator, we can also write this as three to the negative one third. And that does mean that our value of this log expression is going to be negative one third. So I'm not gonna do any fancy rewriting, but there it is. Now our second one, we have another inverse trig expression. This time we're dealing with cosine or arc cosine or inverse cosine. We wanna figure out what angle has cosine negative one. And what's interesting is cosine's value is between negative one and one. So we're at one of those extremes which should lead us towards having a quadrantal answer. So in looking at pieces, just as we've talked about before, each of these inverse trig functions has its own restrictions. So cosine inverse is not like the other two where it's restricted to quadrants one and four, the reason for that is, of course, if you look in quadrants one and four, cosine is positive in both quadrants. So that's not gonna be helpful to us. Instead, cosine inverse runs from zero to pi. So our answers are gonna be from zero to pi or on the interval, the closed interval, from zero to pi. So we want cosine to be negative one. Cosine's negative one all the way over here on the x-axis. And of course, that tells us that cosine inverse of negative one is going to be equal to pi or in degrees, it'd be 180 degrees. So something worth bringing up there, cosine is the one that's kind of interesting. Otherwise, arc sine and arc tangent both behave somewhat the same. It's arc cosine that has the difference, but that way we get one quadrant where cosine's positive, one quadrant where cosine's negative. Okay, from there, that leaves us with one more question to attack. That would be the plus question if memory serves. So the plus question asks you to do the same thing. You're still gonna evaluate a log expression and you're still gonna evaluate an inverse trig expression. They're just gonna be slightly more involved or ask you to do something a little extra. No guarantee every single one will look like this, but they're pretty representative still. So for the first one, it's asking us once again to deal with a log expression. So we're dealing log of root eight or log base root eight of 1 32nd. If we set that equal to y like we have before, we'll get root eight to the y equals one over 32. Once again, as I look at this, I see base twos, I see eights and 32s. So I'm gonna rewrite this as powers of two. This is gonna be, let's see, if we have eight, that's the same thing as the square root of two to the third to the y is equal to two to the negative fifth. And then from there, the square root is the same thing as the one half power. So this is really two to the three halves y is equal to two to the negative five. 
Given that information, we can log base to both sides. We can get rid of the bases. We're gonna end up with our power being equal to negative 10 thirds. So there is our power, really not that different, just involved a little bit more work when you found that common base. Second though, looking at part B, we're supposed to find the inverse sine of the tangent of seven pi over four. And of course, there's always that temptation when you see something inverse of something else to think that something's just gonna cancel, maybe we'll get seven pi over four, of course we won't. So in this case, the hard part is just keeping track of everything and then of course checking the right range restriction. So we want the tangent of seven pi over four, Doing a quick little illustration, seven pi over four is all the way down here. Tangent is going to be the opposite over adjacent. So that's gonna be right there. So one, one, root two, right triangle. Looking at our stuff then, tangent is gonna be negative one. So tangent is negative one. That means we wanna evaluate the inverse sine of negative one. So we're looking for where sine now has negative one. We talked about the fact that the range restriction is from negative pi over two to pi over two. Looking down here, we want the smallest value of sine, because of course sine is between negative one and one. That's gonna occur all the way at the bottom at what we normally call three pi over two, but we can instead call negative pi over two. And there is the value of part B once again. So there is our quick overview of question number five from the standard quiz model, talking about evaluating both logarithmic and inverse trigonometric expressions.